Greetings, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> um, I pray all is well. Um, can someone give me a thumbs up and let me know they hear me clearly? We hear you, brother. Okay. <clears throat> well, brothers and sisters, welcome to another side and gather or end time evangelism. Uh, welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. We thank Great and New Birth for hosting it for us. <clears throat> uh, made a, made a Lord may the Lord continue to strengthen us by your grace. Uh, brother uh, AC, was you trying to say something? Okay, maybe he just, okay. Um, brother, since I got a word for you today, um, <clears throat> it is a uh, it's definitely a heavy meal. Um, but before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has to pour into us today, okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Dear heavenly and wise father, magnificent, mag magnificent father, forgive, forgive us of our sins. We come before your throne. Mm -hmm. Lord, we want to thank you for your patience with us, Lord. Thank you for the fire that you consume us with, that we may live for your glory. God, we are desperate to encounter your presence. We are desperate to be restored by your power. We are desperate to experience everything in you. Father, ignite a blazing fire in us that we may be a torch burning for your glory, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Speak freely. We pray that you would just have your way in this moment. Remove every distraction. Remove anything that will hinder your word from being fruitful in our heart, Lord. And Lord, we pray right now that we give you our undivided attention. And Lord, we thank you and we welcome you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, um, let's get into this word, okay? Man. Uh, we're going to break that thing down into three segments. The first segment will be one word government, world, one word religion. Uh, the second segment will be World War Three and Armageddon, okay? The last segment will be Q&A, okay? Now, <clears throat> everything we talk about in the uh, before we get deep into the first segment, it's what, how your heart need to be to endure through everything we're going to show, okay? Everything we're going to talk about now is the gospel. And when we move forward, that is what why it's important that you be obedient to the gospel because all the article things we're going to go through, your relationship with Jesus, what's going to keep you, keep you uh, from being deceived, okay? And we have to understand that in this hour, the prophecies of the Bible is very important. And they un are unfolding every day right before our eyes, okay? Now, as I've been spending time with the Lord, the Lord says, son, be desperate for me. Oh. He's, as, as I've been spending time with the Lord, he says, son, be desperate for me. Because he says, son, a heart that is desperate is a heart that is broken. And a heart that is broken is a heart that clings to me because they know I'm the, he, because they know I'm the only one that can make it whole. Oh, he says, so be desperate for me. Because he says, son, as you be desperate for me, then you won't, you can't get enough from me. <laughs> See? He said, if you are desperate for me, for me, then you can't get enough from me. He says, son, if a heart cannot get enough for me, that means they are being deeply in love with me because they are consumed with my love for them. Oh, and he says, son, one thing that the prophecies of the Bible would do if do is they will make you cling to my word to a place where you can't get enough that you want to have a buffet on me. He says, son, when you can't get enough of me, it's like I, an all-you-can-eat buffet. You just continue to eat and eat up who I am that you may be completely consumed with the righteousness of my love and your heart will become a blaze for my glory. And then the Lord, to, the Lord says, son, in this hour, he said, my glory is coming for my bride. My glory is coming to fill up my remnant in the seven-year period leading up to my second coming. My glory will consume my church as it did the first church in this revival. And the Lord says, son, let my glory follow in your heart that it may set your heart ablaze for my glory consuming every part of you. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, I am a consuming fire. Okay? Now, the Lord had took me in the spirit and our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus was standing as a consuming fire before me. The Lord said, be desperate so I can consume your heart with me. Oh. And then the Lord took me in the spirit 
as he did Moses and he took Moses up on the mount in the cloud and and as he took Moses and hid Moses in the rock and Moses was able to see the back of God and in the back of God was creation also the Lord our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in his spirit covered me with his glory and I seen the back of God and I in God back I seen the creation the same way Moses did over four thousand over whew, over thousands of years ago the Lord showed it to me the same way and the Lord said to me, son, let me consume you because I am the creator of all things and the author of life. And he said, so as I created all things, so as you see creation in my back, brothers and sisters, he took me in a spirit and I seen God back and in him was creation. He said, so as you seen creation in me, so as the, but the, test of, the testimony of my son Jesus is being created in your heart as a consuming fire that you may be a blazing heat. In this hour, that it will may keep you from all corruption, that you may have a great understanding of who I am, church. And the Lord said to me, let my glory follow in your heart, that it may consume every part of you by me revealing every part of me through my sacrifice. Oh, the Lord said, son, stay sober, stay vigilant. And the Lord said, live a life in this hour that you can't get enough of me, that you have to have me. Eh? Last week, as I was as, as last week, as I had caught COVID, as I had caught COVID and all, all the thoughts were coming through my head, God allowed for me to go through that season to bring me closer to his heart. He allowed for me to experience COVID-19 so I can get closer to his heart to know that he controlled my life and not COVID. You know what I mean? See, that I am a control that you breathe. And as I was going through COVID-19, the Lord showed me, he said, son, Paul was bit by a serpent. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was flogged. Paul was beat. All of your um, John was bored and hot oil, and yet he did not die until he finished my testimony. The Lord says, son, so as the prophecies of the Bible unfold in this hour, know that nothing can stop my word because my word will be fulfilled and I am in control of your life. And he says, son, one thing that the prophecies of the Bible reveal to you that I am life. And I am controlling life, says the Lord Jesus, because I reveal all things through the life of my word. Oh, and the prophecy revealed that the life is in my word because my word is always true, says the Lord Jesus, seated right hand of the Father in heaven with all power and glory. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, let my light shine through you. And the Lord showed me an analogy. He said, son, thank you. He said, son, he said, son, in this hour, son, think about roaches. He said, think about roaches, son. He said, son, roaches are an infestation. Oh, and he said, son, in order for an infestation to get taken care of, chemicals, things have to be sprayed so those roaches can die. Oh, he said, son, in this hour, this seven year period, it is a great, it is a great um, infestation. And the only thing to get it out of your heart is my word. Oh, did it ever see? And then the Lord said to me, he said, son, think about it. Uh, the infestation of roaches, they hide in the daytime. Oh. And, and at night they run rampant. But guess what? When you turn the light on in the house, the roaches that are in the middle of the floor, they scramble. In darkness, they come out and play, run around. But as soon as you flick the lights on in the house, they spread and they scatter because the light frightened them. Oh, he said, son, so as everybody that is anchored in my word, seeing what I'm saying, even though there is a great infestation around them, as long as my light is blazing in their heart, everything else will scatter because I keep them in the palm of my hand. The Lord says, son, be desperate for me. Now, brothers and sisters, as we heard that from the Lord, let us move forward. Let us move forward. In everything that the Lord from the in the articles, because what we just heard, what the Holy Spirit just spoke to us in regards to the gospel, being desperate for him, this is what's going to keep us from everything else that has been going on. Because there is a serious account that is going on. I'm pretty sure you've seen the things going on in the news of Israel. I see pretty pretty sure you've seen the thing they've been talking about UFOs. I, I'm pretty sure you might not have seen, but the globalists just recently had a meeting this week. Uh, if, well, today actually called the Global Health Sum Health Summit. You got to wonder why they got a meeting called the Global Health Summit. What we call the Global Health Summit. Why? Because in this seven-year period, they would take control of the world 
financial systems, the world healthcare systems and all of these things of that nature. Okay. So I'm finna get ready to share my screen and show you some of the things that be uh take to be talked about. Uh in the first set in the first segment, Revelation 13 uh is Revelation 13. Um we're gonna talk about the B system, okay? <clears throat> in this first segment of one world government, we're gonna talk about the B system. Because it ain't, they're going to issue the mark of the beast, but it's going to be the beast system is the beast system. What they're setting up is what's going to make people take it. And, and inside of this global health summit, you're going to hear the beast system at work and whatever they're planning. And so we're going to talk. The main scripture will be Revelation 13, chapter verses 15 through 18. And then we're going to talk about then we're going to um, talk about first Thessalonians 5 out of peace and safety. You're going to see what God was saying. Uh, they heart was over 2,000 years ago playing out today. So let me begin to share my screen with you guys. Give me one second. Okay. So we're going to listen to some things from the Global Health Summit. And I want you to pay close attention <clears throat> to some of the things that they've been talking about at the Global Health Summit. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to go to the top. Okay, here we go. Hopefully I can get it up. Okay. Which sees national states second. that remain. Hopefully, it come. Hopefully, it go back. We're gonna start it. To support uh, access okay. to vaccines, diagnostics, therapeutics, and other medical supplies. By building our preparedness and response on science and evidence, we will move forward. By continuing to pay attention to global health after the crisis has passed, it is difficult. And by establishing sustainable finance mechanisms to really support it. But first, we must act now to bring the pandemic under control all over the world. Not just in some countries or regions, but everywhere. We now have safe and effective vaccines. And this was possible thanks to the investment that we have made in this and the last year, both individual investments and through the new multilateral initiatives created the Act Accelerator and between high and low income countries remains So here's our first day today. Let us give a boost to the vaccination campaign in low and middle income countries with practical and measurable actions. First, we must allow for the export of vaccine doses to the rest of the world and maintain open supply chains. As Mario said, 50% of the European production has been exported to 90 country, countries, COVAX included. And Europe commits to continue doing that in the spirit of equity and solidarity, but also in the spirit of safety for all of us. <laughs> Pause. What she say? What she? What did she say? She said, "In the spirit of safety for all, for all of us." Okay, okay. And at the beginning of this, she would talk. She could talk. She was talking about you know the pandemic and the global health crisis, and and pretty much what she's saying in the sum of is is the is the whole world coming together and tackling this as a whole. But notice she said, "Out of safety for all of us." What the first Thess Thessalonians five tell tell us? It said, "Out of peace and safety, sudden destruction gonna come." It was written in our Bible over 2,000 years ago. What destruction? The beast system, the one world government, uh, where the system they're going to set up with health care, money, and all these other things will call people who have hope in the things of this world to take the mark of the beast. That is destruction. That is sudden destruction. Okay? Out of peace and safety. Okay? Uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel, over 2,000 years ago, spoke about the Antichrist corrupted people with flattery. This is a global health center. It's just not, they're talking about the whole world, okay, coming together, okay. And let's keep moving forward. That, what, she, what you just heard her say was talking in regards to 1 Thessalonians 5. Second, I am delighted 
to inform you that in the pre-summit, our industrial partners in Europe committed themselves. 1.3 billion doses of vaccine will be delivered until the end of this year to low-income countries at no profit and to middle-income countries at lower prices. And on top of this, our industrial partners committed to over 1.3 billion doses more for 2022, many of which will be delivered through COVAX. So thank you very much for that. And third, preventing future health emergency means strengthening capacities throughout the world. Today, Africa imports 99% of its vaccines, and this has to change. And therefore, Team Europe is launching an initiative with African partners to develop vaccine production. Why is that important with Europe and Africa? Because we know Europe is the Holy Roman Empire. In the book of Revelation, uh, in, the book of Re in the book of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar's statue, it had 10 toes at the bottom, which would be, would be the last one, uh, empire before the second coming of Jesus. The European Union is the Holy Roman Empire. They signed the Lisbon Treaty in 2009, bringing together the Holy Roman Empire. That's why they give a Charlemagne Prize in Europe. But why is that important with Europe and Africa? Because they said that the Antichrist is going to take over the treasures of Egypt. Okay, And so God is showing us, brothers and sisters, how that thing is being set up now. Okay, That's why the, the Europe... Uh, so often flock to Europe and also there is a even a man even right now getting even closer to Africa I mean getting even getting even, yeah, getting even closer with Africa because the Antichrist is going to have his hands over there in that uh, in that area um, of the Middle East okay so I just want to show you Europe and Africa working together by design because the Bible says that the Antichrist will be in control of the treasures of Egypt okay so we have to understand that is why Europe is working so close with Africa okay Let's keep moving forward. In Africa, the initiative will develop a number of regional hubs distributed across the continent, and it will draw on the full toolbox of Team Europe, including one billion of investment. Now the Global Health Summit is at a starting point. Indeed, uh, we will certainly also discuss the topic of uh, trips and intellectual property, as Mario mentioned. Well, we all know voluntary licensing is the best way to ensure the necessary transfer of technology and know-how together with IP rights. But the existing TRIPS agreement and the 2001 Doha Declaration already today foresee compulsory licensing as a perfectly legitimate tool for governments to use it in a crisis. And this will be reaffirmed today. But I've been also listening very carefully to developing countries. We had just uh, the summit in France a few days ago, who are complaining about how difficult it is to use these uh, flexibilities. And I think this is something where the global community has to act to provide security and predictability. The Europe First Thessalonians 5 again, said out of peace and safety. Out of what? Peace and security. What she just say? Security. I'm telling you, our Bible is unfolding right before our eyes this, this today. They're talking about global health today. I told you, COVID-19, brothers and sisters, they're using COVID-19 to desensitize the world for the mark of the beast, but also to bring the world into the beast system to say that we need to tackle crisis. Let's move forward. The European Union will therefore come forward with a proposal in WTO in early June to offer a third way in support of the Director General of the WTO, Ngozi. Now, the beginning of a common path for the G20 is today, and the Rome Declaration is the first important milestone of this journey. Thank you very much for being with us. And Mario, the floor is now to you again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ursula. The first speaker today is the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. Dear Antonio, the UN can play a key role. Now, the United Nations is the, is the institution that we created for global, globalization of the world, okay? 
okay and the united nate and, and the leader of the united nation is a pure globalist okay it would be in the book of revelation 13 it talks about 10 kings these 10 kings would take over the authority over the united nations upon the reign of the antichrist okay okay and they are setting the stage for this to happen now watch what this leader of the, the general attorney general of the united nation watch what he say in fighting pandemics and has certainly done great things Tell us more about how we could increase our chances to end the COVID-19 pandemic and prevent more dangerous variants from gaining a foothold. Please, floor is yours, Antonio. Thank you very much, Mario. Excellencies, dear friends, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. From the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, I warned that no one is safe until everyone is safe. And I was deeply concerned by the possibility of a dangerous two-speed response. Sadly, that concern was justified. Grossly and equal... Another thing, this, this man here <clears throat> is a socialist and communist at heart. Why is that important? Because the book of Revelation 17 talks about a woman riding a red beast. The red, be the red beast in Revelation 17 represents communism, represents communism. So it's not by accident that the leader of the world world government is a communist at heart that believes in referee distribution. Okay, so I just want to say that. Access to vaccines, tests, medicines, and supplies, including oxygen, have left poor countries at the mercy of the virus. Recent surges of COVID-19 in India, South America, and other regions have left people literally gasping for breath before our eyes. And the pandemic is still very much with us, thriving and mutating. As winter approaches in the global south, I fear the worst is yet to come. Pause. What did he say? He feared the worst is yet to come. Okay. Do you know what he's saying? Why? Because it's it's few things that happen. We've talked about it in time of evangelism. World War Three, but that, uh, well, third of mankind will be wiped out. But also, also, there's another crisis coming. You see how they're trying to make it seem like science uh, came up with a vaccine. Science. Say the science doing science doing this. So what they're doing is they're taking the world, the world right now. It's like, whoa, man, we're coming out of this crisis, but actually, this world finna go into a greater crisis. Okay, and they use COVID nineteen to to desensitize to desensitize the world, um, to follow science. So when the next crisis come, they're gonna turn people to the corruptness of their heart through science. Okay, they're gonna the corruption of their heart is what's gonna make science completely evil. Okay. Okay, what I'm saying, there is good science, there's bad science. Good science follow the Bible. Corrupt science follow the deeds of man, the corruption of one world, globalization of multilateralism through multilateralism institution to bring the world into the reign of the mark of the beast. Okay. So what he's saying, what, what this is the leader of the United Nations saying that the worst is yet to come. Why? Because this is not it. The Bible tells us in this seven year period it's going to get worse. And another crisis is going to come. And after this next crisis, it's going to cause people to to worship the one world government and science and all this other thing because they do, because they do not have true hope in Jesus. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Okay? Our Lord and Savior Christ, he took me in the spirit. He spoke to me directly, straight to my straight to my face. He spoke to me. He, Jesus spoke to me in the spirit. He said, son, whoever has an ear, let him hear. And brother and sister, I pray that you hear this. Another storm is coming. Another crisis is coming. Okay. But they have descent are desensitizing the world with science. So after the next crisis, the, the people will fall into their hand. Fulfill the Revelation 13, where it said that they wanted after the beast. They wanted after the one world government. Why? Because they did not love the truth and they did not have true hope in Jesus. Let's keep going. Watch what he say. Dear friends, vaccinating quickly and thoroughly around the world together with continued public health measures are the only way to end the pandemic and prevent more dangerous variants from gaining a foothold. But so far, more than 82% of the world's vaccine doses have, do have gone to affluent countries, and just 0.3% have gone to low-income countries. <coughs> the 20th Rome Declaration is a significant step to provide equal access to vaccines. But we need a follow-up mechanism, backed by the political will, to translate the declaration into a global vaccination plan. We have many initiatives. But we must make sure that they add in terms of attracting. We must make sure that there is a coordination of those different initiatives. Some of them were just announced today. And so I repeat my call for the G20 to set up a task force that brings together all countries. What do he say? What do he say? 
D20 to brand to to brand together to create a task force to what bring together all countries. We have the Holy Spirit been telling us in this in, moving forward in 2021, all not the 2022, in this seven year period leading up to this co- second coming. There's about to be a global public announcement. I challenge you to go back to read the book of Daniel. It is the book of Daniel where King, King Nebuchadnezzar swole up with pride. He sat up a golden statue and he told everybody in the world. Whenever you hear the bagpipe, the harps fall down to worship the golden statue, fall down to worship. Okay. Well, there's going to be a public announcement. You're going to see world leaders, world leaders come out in their countries on Front Street, on major news outlets, and they're going to say, hey, it's time for the world. They're going to come bluntly out their mouth. Because people is going to be so deceived. People are going to be uh, so hungry for uh, someone to save them because of this crisis and every other law of deception. They're going to come out bluntly and say, hey, it's time for the whole world to come into a one world family, a new world order, globalization through transparency so we can go over the world so everybody can be safe. And because people's heart will be in a state of fear, they, they, those that don't love Jesus will, will fall victim to fear and be given over to it. What is the evidence? Um, the Holy Spirit is telling us right now before this meeting, before this meeting, the Holy Spirit has spoken to us on here saying that there's going to be a public announcement. And hear this man saying out of his mouth, this meeting was just today. The Holy Spirit been saying this to us. This man come out of his mouth today and say, hey, we need to get together a task force, task force to do what? To bring together countries, to bring a brain uh, to bring countries together in globalization to tackle a crisis. Keep moving forward. With vaccine production capacities, the World Health Organization and the ACT Accelerator Partners, the international financial institutions, able to deal with the pharmaceutical companies and other key stakeholders. Task force should address equitable global distribution by using the COVAX facility. And it should aim to at least double manufacturing capacity by exploring all options from voluntary licenses and technology transfers to patent pooling and flexibility on intellectual property rights. The G20 task force should be co-convened at the highest levels by the major powers who hold most of the global supply and production capacity together with the multilateral system. Multilateralism system. We've talked about that on end time evangelism before. Multilateralism. Multilateralism is a big fancy word uh, for... Uh, uh, for glo- for globalization, matter of fact, give me one second. Let me give you the definition of this word again, so so uh, uh, so so they won't uh, try to deceive us with these uh, big fancy words. Okay, okay, multilateralism. Uh, um, give me one second. Multilateralism definition. I want to give you the definition of multilateralism. Give me one second. Hopefully it pops up quick, quickly. I'm looking it up for you guys. Okay, multilateralism. The principle of participation by three or more parties, especially by governments of, of different countries. So what he's saying is <clears throat> bringing governments from different countries together into globalization to tackle every crisis, bringing everyone upon it a order to follow what they're saying. Okay. Let me repeat this definition. Multilateralism, the principle of participation by three or more parties, especially by governments of different countries. Okay. So governments of different countries come together to govern the people out of a global solidarity and allegiance to the agenda of the one world government. Let's keep moving. I'm ready to mobilize the entire United Nations system to support these efforts. The task force must also leverage the ACT accelerator and its COVAX facility. Let's be clear. We are at war with the virus. And if you are at war with the virus, we need to deal with our weapons with the rules of a war economy. And we are not yet there. And this is true for vaccines and it's true for other important components of the fight against the virus. By now, COVAX should have delivered 170 million doses around the world. But due to vaccine nationalism, limited production capacity, and lack of funding, that figure is just 65 million. I call on G20 countries to lead by example and contribute their full share of funding. An investment of billions could end up saving trillions and saving lives. Dear friends, 
a global coordinated effort on vaccines can end this pandemic. But it will not pre help prevent the next. And I fully support last week's bold recommendations from the Independent Panel for Pandemic Preparedness and Response. The world needs political commitments at the highest level to take internationally coordinated, cross-cutting measures and transform global pandemic preparedness. The bedrock of the recovery from COVID-19 and of preventing and addressing future health crises is universal health coverage and robust primary health care systems. These are essential to achieving SDG 3 and the entire 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Dear friends, it is time... What do you say? Healthcare system and sustainable de development. What we have, we talked about before, that the whole point of the uh, one world government, governments all around the world, is to, to implement the sustainable, the, the, the sustainable, sustainable development goals by 2030 that come from the United Nations. That's why you see them pushing the issue about climate change and energy and stuff like that, because they have an agenda by 2030. And if Jesus did not come back soon, you would have no idea. If Jesus did not come back soon, no earth on earth would be, no soul on earth would be saved because of what these people are trying to do. Time for decisive action. I urge G20 countries in collaboration with the United Nations to assume a strong leadership role in ending, in ending this devastating global pandemic. Together, we can and we must build a healthier, safer, fairer, and more sustainable world. And I thank you. Okay, so, <clears throat> brother and sister, let's take serious what, what we just heard, okay? Okay, out of peace and safety, said they would destroy many, okay? The global health government, they, they, right now, as we just listened, basically what he's talking about is a global health governance system. A global health governance system that will be regulated and orchestrated by the one world government that, that will make it more inclusive. Why? Why? Because the book of Revelation 17 said that this would be a red beast, a communist beast. Why? Revelation chapter 6 said it was a red horse. Inside of that red horse, the red horse, the book of Zechariah said that those four horses in the book of Revelation 6 are spirits. Okay. So that red horse represents a red spirit. And inside of that red spirit is communism. Okay. Okay. And so what they're doing is bringing the world into a inclusive capitalism state. In, in inclusive capitalism really is nothing but communism that red horse at work so that they can global uh, so they can govern the global health of the world why because this is part of the beast system revelation 13 15 through 18 let me read it revelation 13 15 through 18 this is a part of that beast system the mark of the beast is just going to be the access it's this system what they're setting up right now this may they are talking about systems system that they are building that's what's going to make people to take the mark because they're going to have everything up on their hand um majority every every country that follow the antichrist will be up on their hand will be up on their hand uh, so therefore they're going to make people take the mark because you're going to have to be in a system to access these things should we be afraid absolutely not why because the book of daniel 11 33 tell us said that the church will be great and do exploit again that means god have a system for for the church to operate in this hour, he have a way he want it done. That's why I pray that churches, churches begin to come together. So the Holy Spirit gonna speak to us and tell us how we're gonna move, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna operate food, how we're gonna uh, move and do different things in this hour. That's why it's important for us to come to our resources and lay down our pride, lay down our idols and, and see the bigger picture, which is the gospel and come together because we're gonna need each other greatly. Different churches are gonna have to come together in this hour. And God got a plan the way he wanted done. Revelation 13, verses 15 to 18. Here we go. He said, he was, granted, uh, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should not speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He calls this all both small, great, rich, poor, free, and slave to receive the mark on the right hand of their forehead, and that no one may buy or sell unless, uh, except they, the one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the name of his name. Here's the wisdom. Let him who have understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, 666. Okay? Okay? You know, God was giving us a sign when they wanted us to be six feet apart. God was showing us that COVID-19, uh, they're using to descend. It's not by accident that they're saying be six feet apart or be six feet this, be six feet that. Why? Because God was giving the whole world, those that read the Bible, a sign that they're using this to desensitize the world for the mark of the B666 that is coming. Okay. 
Okay, why is this important? Not so we can be afraid so that we would know, but also so we can turn to God and repentance and say, God, what do you want us to do? Because Daniel chapter 11, verse 33, let me read chapter Daniel. Let me read uh, Daniel chapter 33. God prophesied. He, he prophesied the mark of the beast that no one will be by itself, but God also prophesied that he have a plans for us to operate even though the mark of the beast is going to be in place. That's why we got to be now. If we were, if we come together now, begin to prepare, we'll be ready. We'll be ready. Okay. Let me, let me go to Daniel. Give me one second. Let me go to Daniel real quick. Ezekiel, Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. I love God. He never left us without a witness. Daniel 32, it says, those who do wickedly, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, those who do wickedly against the covenant shall, he shall corrupt with flattery. Uh, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And those who are the people who understand shall instruct many, okay? Yet uh, many uh, shall, uh, they, they shall fall by the sword and, and by flame, by captivity and plundering. So yes, God saying there will be persecution, but listen to what he said, y'all still will be great. You still would be, you still would do up, extra but listen to it listen to it now listen listen to the requirement for them to be great marie 32 it said it said those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with and be flattery okay but the people who know their god who have a relationship with jesus shall be strong and do exploit that means there's going to be revival that means they're still going to be functioning they still will have uh they still will function they food different types of things still will be provided for them they will be great Okay? Even if he don't provide food, don't provide these things, we're still not going to take the mark. But what God is saying is he is going to have a system in place for us how to operate. But listen to the requirement. Verse 33 is the requirement. It said, listen to it. It said, and those who are the people who understand shall instruct many. So the key to us being successful in this seven year period during the great church on uh, tribulation is having the understanding that God wants us to have. He said, those that understand shall instruct many and be great. So if you're not walking with the spirit, you won't have the understanding. You won't know the system. You won't know how to operate when family hit this world in this hour. You won't know how to operate the understanding and know what God have planned. God been having people planning stuff for years, building stuff for years, but you got to walk with the spirit so he can guide you to those things. That's why it's important for us to come together now because those who listen now and come together, of course, God grace uh, will be with us through the end of seven year period that we are in. But those who hear God now and respond to his word and not push it off and not try to wait to see uh, if it's true for it to happen, but believe it by faith. He told Tommy, he said, blessed are those who have not. He said, Thomas, you believe me because you touch you touching the holes in my hand. He said, blessed are those who have not seen, but, but yet believe those that hear what the Holy Spirit is saying now on end time evangelism. They will be perfectly in place ahead of people before it great tribulation come because they believe what god was saying now if noah would have waited till it started raining to build an ark he would have died in the flood but noah responded he said god though i don't it had never rained i believe what you're saying so i'm going to go to building before it happened i pray that you hear with the holy spirit now so we can go to building before the rain of the great tribulation come so when it come, we have the understanding we'll be already in place, striking a blow to the enemy because we believe that we were headed there before we got there. So I pray that we come together and really come together and allow the Holy Spirit begin to speak to us. Okay, Very important. This Global Health Summit is all about global health care, universal health care. Watch, they're going to take this, they're going to say we need to bring the whole world into a global health care system to have everybody into one system so, so so we can know how to distribute people to low income and those who are not in low income. You see how they talk about low income and those that are not in low income because they're gonna bring the whole world into a global health, a universal healthcare system out of a place to say, hey, as, as everybody get into the system, we know how to distribute everything accordingly and how it is needed so everybody can be safe from the next crisis. Please believe what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Okay. okay. This is the B system. What you're seeing this man talk about is Revelation 13, 15 through 18. Okay. First Thessalonians 5, uh, peace and safety. Okay. Global governance. Okay. So now that we've talked about that, now let's go to some of the articles. And then, Thank you very much, Secretary General. Uh, after we talked about that, now we're going to go. The next video is this video with my uh, hand at possible energy tech while being investigated near White House. They're talking about some sci fi type stuff, what is going on. We're going to talk about that because. That is what's going to make people cave in to science. They also been talking about UFOs. Why are they important? Tell you, brothers and sisters, we, we, we just in the first year of this seven-year period. Watch what happened now. 
watch moving forward how deception becomes so real how they talk about ufos and how people some people that uh don't believe the biblical account of genesis genesis in genesis one it said in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth if you don't hold fast to Genesis 1 1. You're going to be deceived in the seven year period. If you don't hold fast that God created the heavens and earth in six days, you will you'll, you, you will cave in and turn away from your faith for what's about to happen in the seven year period. Because they're going to talk about stuff, they're going to talk about, they're going to make, they're going to make deception and lying on us through the deception of stars in the universe and different other things in this seven year period. And if you don't hold fast that God have told you that I created the stars, I created the universe, you will be deceived. It's not by accident they're talking about UFOs. It's not by accident they're talking about different energy weapons and stuff like this. We're gonna get into it. It's gonna make people cave into science and say, well, even those that play church, they really love this world, they're gonna say, you know what? False leaders who love money, and to, to fill butts and seats in church, they're going to say, you know what? Well, maybe God did not create it in six days. Maybe it was being just years. Maybe, maybe this science is what we should incorporate in the scripture. Maybe, our, maybe the scripture should be progressed into what they're saying. In this seven-year period, false leaders are, is going to preach a progressive faith. They're going to say that the word of God need to progress with uh, evolution and science. That's what false leaders are going to say because in their heart, they corrupt with money. But last time I checked, Jesus said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word don't progress. It stays the same. Okay? So we have to understand what is happening right now. And I pray we hear what it's saying to take serious what is happening. Okay? So I'm going to show you this video. I'm going to show you this video. and uh, This video, what they're talking about. And then after I show you the video, what they're talking about, this same video is a part of one world government and deception what they're going to use but also it is a part of uh one world world war three and how these people really want to start a war uh with russia and not just russia it's not just with russia it's just not only with russia but how the whole world is their hearts are being pricked for war world war three that wipe out a third of mankind okay you see what's been happening in israel recently you see that what they're talking about with russia what you just watch okay Direct energy attacks sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but now the Pentagon and Capitol Hill say that they are very real. They come from an unknown energy and an unknown enemy, I should say, and source, and they're leaving members of our intel community with lasting neurological struggles. The first attacks happened in Havana, Cuba in 2016, then in China, in Russia, against our people there, and most recently, way too close to home. A suspected attack not far from the South Lawn of the White House. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin with the very latest on this today from the Pentagon. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Martha. Well, U.S. officials say there are now 130 suspected victims, mostly CIA operatives and U.S. diplomats being treated for brain injuries, debilitating headaches and vertigo. The targets, they believe, of a directed energy microwave weapon. Fox has confirmed two individuals working on the NSC during the Trump administration believe they were targeted in 2019 and in 2020 in the days following the election. One was near the White House and one was walking her dog. The Russians have been working on mobile microwave weapons for years. We have to get more information and we got to tell the public what's going on. They're Russia certainly has the means and the motive to conduct these attacks. I mean, there's some, some evidence out there that certainly points to Vladimir Putin, the KGB operative in the Kremlin, being responsible. The CIA leadership under Director Gina Haspel refused to recognize the symptoms as an attack on U.S. officials. That has changed under Director Bill Burns, who is now getting daily updates on the victims and investigations into who or what is responsible. The victims have lobbied for treatment at Walter Reed's National Center for the Intrepid. As part of this therapy, one CIA officer painted this mask of a Superman cape with a broken CIA shield with an arrow through it to symbolize the moral injury he felt when at first he was not believed by the CIA. Another U.S. official targeted by this apparent weapon painted a red splash of paint on a black canvas to suggest that it would have been easier mentally to deal with this injury had he been shot by an actual bullet. This has been a long journey for these CIA officers and U.S. diplomats who finally are being believed. Martha. Jennifer, thank you so much.
former C the former senior CIA intelligence officer who uh, created that mask, Mark Poly Polymeropoulos, says that a work trip to Moscow about three years ago changed his life and ended his 26-year career after he claims he became the victim of one of these direct energy attacks. Mark joins me now. Mark, great to have you with us. Thank you, Martha. I also want to mention your book uh, that is coming out. It's called Clarity in Crisis, Leadership Lessons from the CIA. So, Mark, how, when did you first realize that you had been hit with one of these attacks? What was the symptom? So it was uh, December of 2017 in a Moscow hotel room. You know, I, I woke up with an incredible case of vertigo, tinnitus, which is ringing in my ears. Um, I felt like I was going to be sick. Uh, you know, I had spent years in war zones in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'd been you know, in pretty precarious situations, but this was the most you know, terrifying experience of my life. Did you think it was, did anything in you at that moment think I, I've been attacked by something that I can't see? So, so certainly it crossed my mind that something, you know, pretty terrible had happened. And, and it really became more acute when I returned shortly after the United States and started this three-year medical journey where, where I basically had to retire ultimately, where I, you know, I, I lost my, my long distance uh, uh, vision um, I, I couldn't work anymore. I had splitting headaches. And the fact of the matter is, to this day, I've had a, a splitting migraine headache for, for three years. It's awful. Um, what, what do you think? It happened to you in Moscow. When you hear that there may be these two attacks, which were just confirmed by uh, our reporting from Jennifer Griffin, right near the White House, I mean, what's to stop them from going closer than, than the perimeter of the White House, Mark? Sure, and I, and I think we should be really concerned, you know, first and foremost, and especially when we hear from, you know, Senator Collins, Senator Rubio, mm -hmm. Senator Warner, and others who, who have said very openly that the attacks are continuing, um, even, you know, including this past month overseas to our diplomats and intelligence officers. Now you hear um, that this has reached our shores. And, and I'll tell you, the, the, you know, in terms of the individuals who have been hit in, in Washington, you know, they fit the profile and the modus operandi of the attacks abroad, the lasting health issues um, also appear con consistent um, with what officers abroad were, were, were experiencing. So I think it's a, a, a really tremendous concern to our national security professionals. So who's doing this and, and how do they launch it? You know, where are they driving by? How, what's the distance, do we think? So, so I think that, you know, first and foremost, you can go back to a, a declassified document from the mid 90s from the National Security Agency, which talked, which talked about a hostile adversary. So, brothers and sisters, and we watching these things. Why is this important, brothers and sisters? Why is it important? Because this play also into the, the agenda of domestic terror, the, uh, play into the agenda of domestic terror and why they're going to need a force to tackle domestic terrorism. That's the first thing. Second thing, and, but all of this will lead to persecution of those who do not conform to the one world government. The second thing is, the second, the second thing is what it also is doing, uh, setting the stage for a global war. For saying that people doing this, they doing that, and to bring the whole world into a global war, well, they eventually is going to bring to a global war, World War Three, that wipe out a third of mankind to bring the whole world to say, hey, we need to lay down our guns, and we need to have one force that is able to carry and do these things to keep the world safe. You got to know what what is going on right here. It's, it's very serious account what is happening right now, brothers and sisters. It's not a game. The people are doing this stuff by design. Okay? The people are doing this stuff. By the by design. Okay. I just want to show you also right here that um give me one second. I'm trying to uh it won't move out of the way. Okay, cool. I want I also want to show you guys that um, um I want to see can I move this up? Um also that immigration is just not in the it's just not a problem in America. immigration why is it important because we spoke before the immigration is not going on at the border in texas they're having problems all around the world why because they're using it to bring the whole world into a uh, digital identity system saying that this is how the whole world can function as one family where you can go into any country as as you wish because no country will be an independent country but an interdependent country depending on international law those who worship the uh the antichrist now the country that don't follow the antichrist um, a lot of them would reject a lot of his agendas. So who all follow the Antichrist, this is what they would do with immigration. Okay. Now let's go to some of these articles. Okay. 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 Very important. We got a nice segment on uh um uh war war government world government and stuff like that, brothers. It's a very serious account. So let's 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 go let's go to it. Okay. Um 
now. Now watch this. Now this is something I want to show you. This is why you got to be careful. This is why you got to be careful what you follow. Okay. Now we've been seeing going on with Israel. You got to ask why? Why is the why is Iran? Uh, why is Iran always trying to wipe Israel? Why is Iran always trying to wipe I Israel off the map? Okay. Why is there was a war in Israel for eleven days? Why is that happen? Okay, this is just a build up to World War Three. It's going to continue to build in different pockets of the world, bit by bit, for the Black Sea and different other things. It's going to be a piece by piece until it just boil over. Okay, why is this important? Why is Iran? Why is Hamas so against Israel? Because Revelation six, the force, the four horsemen are already at work. Um, the Bible have uh, clearly revealed these things, but also the Lord Jesus have took me in the spirit and showed me four horses grazing in the field. He showed me these four horses grazing in the field, and I'm looking at the horse of grace, and he says, son, look at the horses that are grazing. I said, what do you mean, Lord Jesus? He said, son, he said, son, the Lord Jesus said, son, whenever horses are grazing in the field, that means they're already at work. But whenever they're there to standing still, they're waiting on son, waiting on something. But he said, son, look, they're not waiting on nothing. They're not standing still. They're moving. So what he's saying is the four horses in the book of Revelation 6 are already at work. They're already grazing the field. They're already moving back and forth in the earth, north, south, east, and west. And the Lord was showing me, uh, so the book of Revelation 6 talks about one of the horses. The, 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 it, said it was a pale horse. Well, that word pale in the Greek means chloros, chloros. And that word chloros is green. So what it was saying, it was a pale green horse, a green horse. Well, we know the color. So what it was saying, it was a green spirit. The horse is a green spirit. What spirit in the earth that represent green? Islam, Islam. When you look at they flag, they love to represent the country green. When you look at Hamas, they flag is green, a Islamic uprising. Yeah. So God and and, and it said that horse that ride on that horse, uh, death. What did they say in Revelation six about their horse? Let's go to it. Revelation six. It tell us about their horse. It said it was a pale green horse. Let's go to Revelation six. The four horse. It said that uh, it said if, uh, the four seal. When he opened the fourth sea, I heard the voice, the four living creatures say, oh, the four living creatures say, come and see. So I look and behold, a pale horse and the name him who, who sat on him was death. That means the spirit of this horse would glorify death and hate is follow him and hell, fo and hell follow him. And power was given unto him over four part of the earth. Well, Islam, the, the nation of Islam is about a fourth. They're, all of Islam, all of the people who claim Islam make up about a fourth of the earth. Okay, that's what it's, that's what it's saying right here to kill with the sword, with hunger, death, and by beasts of the earth. Look look at the war that's been going on with Hamas and Israel. Have it been put in the Palestinians um, out, of, uh, out, of their, uh, uh, out of their homes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Famine. Most of the Muslim, Muslims, the, some of the poorest countries in the world are Muslim countries. Okay? But what else did it say? That, that this green spirit, it said that it, 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 uh, it glorified death. Think about a lot of Islamic Muslim, they suicide bombers. Why? Because they glorify death. They glorify death. They mean when they suicide bomb themselves, they're gonna get a higher reckoning wherever they when they believe they believe they would go. But what did God say? Hell follow them. They don't go all the place, they go to hell because they murder. Okay. So watch this now. It said, it said that to it said a power was given to over four parts of the earth to kill with the sword. Okay. Is there evidence with Islam uh, that they live by the sword? Absolutely. That's why they love beheading people. That's why ISIS was beheading Christians. Because the Bible tells us that Islam, this green spirit, they would glorify death with the sword. That's why they love beheading people with a sword. Why? Because the Bible prophesied over 2,000 years and told us how their heart would be. And what were they saying? That this green spirit uh, would be an uprising. The book of Ezekiel said that Iran, Russia, and Turkey would come against Israel from the north. Well, they are right now in Syria. Why is this important with Israel and this last this war that they were just seeing for 11 days? Why was it? Because Hamas is supported by Iran. Matter of fact, the leader thank Iran for so supporting them with Israel. Why is it important? Because Revelation 6 said this green spirit, this horse, horse is going to be operating in the earth. And Iran is the main sponsor of terrorism in the whole world in the Middle East. Okay. And we got America trying to go back into a deal with Iran to give them billions of dollars to even fund more other terrorism. Okay, the, spent, the Pentagon in America is about to be is about to spin out of control. The Pentagon in America is about to spin out of control because they are going to be judged severely by the hand of God. They're about to be spin out of spin out of control and do things that don't even make sense. 
Why? Because they thought they 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 thought their military is God, but it's God that kept them. But God is gonna allow America to get humble, and the remnant will rise out of the ashes. Okay, very very important stuff that is going on right now. So this is why we this is why we have to be uh, understand what is going on right now, brothers and sisters. Okay. Now let me show you right now uh, why it's important. Um, but this is why it's important with Iran. This this what happened with Iran. And Israel and Hamas recently were just fulfilling Revelation 6, this green spirit. Islam uprising in the earth, getting ready um, for what's going to happen, the last attack and assault on Israel, which they will fail because Jesus is going to come. Okay, Black Lives Matter, listen to it because the recent world, watch it now. Black Lives Matter stands in solidarity, solid, solidarity with Palestinians. The Palestinian is another word for the Philistines. You remember King David, uh, King David fought Goliath? Well, Goliath was, was if we modernize Goliath, he would, in, in a sense, be with the Palestinians because the Palestinians is just, is just the Philistine. They are the Philistine. Palestinians are ancient Philistine. So Goliath came from this, this set of people. Okay. So Black Lives Matter stands with solidarity with Palestine, vows to fight for the Palestinian liberation. So you got the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement saying that they stand with the Palestinians. They stand with the Philistines. That's why, that's why I don't think it's by, that's why I don't think it's by accident that in America, the people that was in the Black Lives Matter movement was burning Bibles in Portland. Why is it important? Why? Because Satan believes, why is it, okay, why, why is it important? Because Satan believes, Satan believes if he wipe out the Jewish people, then the Messiah won't come. So Satan is consistently trying to mur he trying to murder the Jewish people, wipe them out of the land of Israel. So he thinks Satan in his deception, in his own deception, he thinks if he kill all the Jewish people, that's why um, uh, um, Hitler was a Satan was a Satan worshiper, and he killed six million, six million Jews. Why? Because Satan believed if he wipe out all of the Jews, if he wipe out all of the Jews, Jesus won't come. He's trying to stop Jesus from coming. So he said, you know what? If I kill the Jewish people, the Jesus won't come. Complete deception. That's why he's continue, continue to trying to wipe out the Jewish people. And here, Black Lives Matter movement is saying that, hey, we're going to stand with the Palestinians. You know what the Palestinian call? Palestinians, th the Philistines, think, believe, they, they believe, the Palestinians believe that the Jewish people don't have a right to the land of Israel. That the Jew, that, 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 that the, the land of Jerusalem don't belong, uh, uh, belong uh, to the Jewish people. The Palestinians believe that Jerusalem belonged to Allah, a false god. So anybody, so and some of us church people walking around with Black Lives Matter on our shirts, Black Lives Matter on our masks, don't know what we're doing because we 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 being consumed by our flesh, by by culture, not knowing that these people are moving. Some of these people are moving in a antichrist type spirit way that event that that eventually is an assault. This is going to be an assault. They're trying to turn culture into an idol where eventually it will be an assault against the church and Jewish people. The leading Black Lives Matter, or I know that's not a sexy message, but it's the truth. The leading Black Lives Matter, uh, uh, now let me say this, do, 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 should we speak up for things that are not right? Absolutely. Okay, should we speak up if, if, if people are uh, not being right, uh, Blacks are not being treated right? Ain't nothing wrong with speaking up about that. But we cannot turn it into an idol. Why? Because Jesus loved black, white, blue, purple. He loved all of us. He died for all of us, not just for black people. Okay. Let us not get in our flesh because these people have got something got something else going on. The leading Black Lives Matter organization declared solidarity with the Palestinians. Monday, a week after Hamas terrorists in Gaza began, Gaza began firing a relentless barrage of rockets into Israel, indiscriminately shelling civilian targets as well as dropping missiles short and blowing up buildings within his territory. Black Lives Matter stands in solidarity with the uh, Palestinian, the group tweeted. We are, we are a movement committed to end the settler colonialism. So they're taking and say, listen, we, we sympathize with the Palestinians because they are oppressed like we are. Wow. Watch it now. We are a movement committed to end the settler. What does Philistines got to do with Black Lives Matter? Well, we better wake up, man. Settler colonialism in all forms, and we'll continue to advocate for Palestinian liberation. Always has and always will be. Look, hashtag free Palestine. 
So they saying free Palestine. You know what they're saying? The Palestinians saying that, you know what? All of the Jewish people need to be murdered and cast into the sea. Iran said that all the Jewish people need to, they always boast about driving Israel to the sea, murdering all the Jews just like Hitler did. So Iran want to free Palestine by killing all the Jewish people. And here Black Lives Matter saying hashtag free Palestine. Well, the only way they think that the uh, Jewish should be free is to kill all of them. So when you put hashtag free Palestine, you co-signing on what they believe in. But we better wake up. The announcement prompted a thank you tweet from the controversial boycott, divert investment, and sanction movement or B of or BDS, which has for years called for an economic embargo in Israel. Okay. Better wake up. What is going on is very serious account. Okay. Black Lives Matter is not just for black lives. It's, it's a different movement going on. Th listen to it. Thank you for your solidarity. The left-wing group tweeted in response from Ferguson to Palestine. Our struggle against racism. So listen, they call him uh, Jew. They call him Jew. The, Pal the conflict with Israel and Palestinians racism. You see how they bring all the things into social justice with the one world government, what the Holy Spirit is telling us. That it's not just about black people. They bring the whole world into a, into a they bring this whole thing world into globalism through social injustice now they're saying it they're saying that black lives matter black racism is the same as racism with the palestinians well we better wake up man the tweet came as a pro-palestinian protesters gathered in the u.s and all the western countries to call for a ceasefire in the region okay listen to it from ferguson to palestine our struggles against racism white supremacies and for a just world are united just world what globalism united in social in in their form of social justice which is deception man we better wake up man when i seen this my heart was crushed broken that's why we got to be careful in this hour what we follow don't just follow stuff because it's your color it's your race because it's it's, it's an agenda of the spirit of the antichrist in this hour some people out there might care about black people it's that's not the, why, why this movement is moving it's very serious account what is going on very serious account Okay, let's go to some more article. Now we finna we now I'm finna kind of mix the mix, mix the first and segment together um, because it's still gonna be some more stuff about one world government. But the second segment is uh, World War Three and um, and uh, Armageddon. Now the sixth trumpet war, World War Three, and at the seventh trumpet will be the battle of Armageddon. That's when Jesus is gonna call us up in the rapture at the seventh trumpet, and we're gonna go with him to Jerusalem. Jesus took me in the spirit and showed me. How we will be called up in the air and all of us going to Jerusalem with him. He took me in the spirit and showed it to me. And it's going to be amazing. Okay. Wow, it's going to be so amazing. He's going, we're going to be, we're going to be on the oh man, we're going to stand with him in Jerusalem. And it's going to be so amazing. He took me in the spirit and showed me how it's going to be us being raptured up and we're going to Jerusalem to stand with him and fight against the one world government. Okay. Now, why is this important? Because if we are in the seven year period, in the seven year period, it's going to be the battle of Armageddon. Well, Iran, Russia, and Turkey is going to go with the one world government against Israel. Okay? And we seeing signs of it right now. Look what Turkey said. Look at Turkey. This is so prophetic, man. This is so prophetic, man. It's so prophetic, man. The Bible is so accurate. Okay. Okay. Turkey calls on international forces to conquer Jerusalem. This man, the leader of Turkey, don't even know what he's doing, but he's fulfilling the book of Zechariah over a thousand years ago and Ezekiel uh, 38. Listen to what it said in, uh, in Zechariah 12, 3. They got the scripture right here. When all the nations of the earth shall uh, earth gather against her, in that day I will make uh, a stone for all people to lift. All who lift it shall injure themselves, Zechariah 12, 3. Turkey calls on international forces to conquer Jerusalem. Because of this recent war, see everything that is happening with Israel, the whole world is turning, tur God is turning his whole world toward Israel, towards Israel and to the battle of Armageddon. So God going to glorify himself and crush the whole one world government. This man called on international forces to conquer Jerusalem. What did this man just say out of his mouth? Ezekiel 38. Why? Because the whole world is going to be against Jerusalem and the whole international community is going to come and try to take Jerusalem. You got to ask, well, why are they going to take Jerusalem? Because the Antichrist is going to reign on the one world government and the one world government have an international law system. It called resolution, resolution, go UN resolution 2334. What did that say? 
Well, you were in Re you were in revolution resolution two three three four said that the Jewish people is a occupying power that they don't have a right to the land of Jerusalem. Who allowed for that resolution to to pass? The Obama administration. <laughs> The Obama administration allowed for UN Resolution 2334 passed. They could have vetoed it, but Obama it, uh, stabbed Israel in the back and they allowed for the resolution to pass to say that Israel don't have a right to the land of Jerusalem. Now, the UN Resolution 2334 that were passed in Revelation, I mean, that were passed in 2016, right before the Trump administration came in office. This resolution is going to be the reason why the Antichrist come and try to take Jerusalem from Israel. And Turkey right now is calling on the international forces. See, this thing being set up for, ever since before Trump came in office, it's been setting the stage for the, the uh, battle Armageddon. This, this, the battle Armageddon, the stage was set for the battle Armageddon, the seventh trumpet when uh, before the Trump administration. December the, in December 2016 is when they passed the UN, UN Revolution 2334. When Obama and them allowed for that to pass, the time clock, the time clock took off for the battle Armageddon. Once that UN resolution 2334 passed in 2016, the time clock, prophetic time clock, took off for the battle Armageddon for the seventh trumpet for Jesus to come back and crush this world for trying to take Jerusalem. Turkey said Turkey calls on international forces to conquer to Jerusalem. Tell them, but these things are happening fast at breaking their speed. You see the UN army? You see, you see they got their little thing? Why? Because they got they got their army. There's gonna be a whole nother army to enforce their agenda. That's why that that leader, the leader, the head leader of the United Nations, was talking about a global tax force, their own army, and everything. They he was talking about a task force of leaders, but eventually it'll lead to a task force of mili uh, or, or, or militarization as well. Okay. After the academy meeting, president at the presidential complex in Ankara late Monday, Turkey President Erdogan Erdogan held a media conference. In which he called on the UN, the One World Government, Organization of Islamic Cooperation, and other international organizations to take actions focused on wrestling Jerusalem away from Israel. This man is talking Ezekiel 38, coming to them. He's just fulfilling prophecy. Iran, Russia, and Turkey, and the whole One World Government is going to come against Israel from the north through Syria. And here this man talking right now because of this recent war. This war would just happen with Israel. Look at the operation. Look at the operation of Israel that they used, that Israel used to fire the rockets on uh, the Gaza. The title of the Israeli operation was Guardian of the Wall. Guardian of the Wall. God is the guardian over Jerusalem. And that, that operation, what they did, didn't do nothing but now turn the whole world to Jerusalem to deal with Israelis and the Palestinians in a two state solution. But what else? To drive the whole world towards the battle of Armageddon. To the, even the point where, because of this recent war, Turkey saying we need to take Jerusalem away from Israel. Man, you better, but we better, we better take it serious with the Bible. Everything this article props out in our Bible over two thousand years ago. Telling you where are we living in, brother? It's, okay, okay. Look at what else? What else happened? What else happened? Uh, uh, what else happened? Lebanon. Lebanon. Direct Lebanon. energy tax sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but now the Pentagon sorry, and that, Capitol that Hill say that they see. are very real. They come from an un Okay, what else happened? Lebanon fires rockets in Israel. So in this recent war, Lebanon rockets came from Lebanon. Why is that important? Because these would be one of the nations that invade Israel. It said Israel will be surrounded by her enemies. Rockets came from Lebanon. A rocket also came from Syria during this war, precursors to what's going to happen during the Great Tribulation. I mean, uh, precursors that will happen at the Battle of Armageddon after the Great Tribulation when the seventh trumpet is sounded, when Jesus is going to tear the firmament of heaven and descend to the earth. Okay. 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 Just going to show these things. These things are happening, brother and sister. This is the hour that we are in. It's going to get worse. This is what I'm telling you. Watch. We, we, we just uh, one year in. Watch. Moving forward, how do things take off? Hamas uh, vows to destabilize Jerusalem thanks to Iran support. Who? Iran. See? They are part of that green spirit, that green horse. Okay. Okay. Hamas will, listen to it. Hamas will continue to defend Jerusalem. Okay. Head of the operation. Okay. 
but Black Lives Matter said they support, support Palestinians. Hell, uh, uh, Black Lives Matter said they support the Palestinian movement. In reality, you actually co signed it with Hamas, a terrorist organization, because the Ham Hamas said they fighting for the Palestinians. And you got Black Lives Matter saying, hashtag free Palestine. Better be careful what you co sign on, man. Hamas will continue to defend your Jerusalem. Head of the Hamas political pool said Friday, as he was concluded the operation that saw more than four to 500 rockets and mortar lunch toward Israeli territory. In a speech given Friday, hours after the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas came into effect, suggested that Hamas' current objective is to continue fueling the ongoing violence between Palestinian and security forces in West Bank and Jerusalem. Very serious account what is going on, brother and sister. Okay. Okay. Just want to show you, just want to show you what is going on, brother and sister. It's a very serious account. These are not normal times. I promise you, it's, it's not going back. The world wants you to believe that it's going back the way it, it was. It's not going back the way it was. We in a seven-year period leading to the second coming of Jesus. It's not going to go back to the way it was. This thing, God, every word that God say what happened in the seven-year period, it's going to happen at full force. It's going to take off back to back, back to back with no stop. There will be no more delay. There will be no more prophecies delayed with the book of Revelation. There will be no more prophecies delayed. You're about to see everything happen at a swift speed telling you brothers it, it, it there will be no more delay no more space in between the lord is finna he's not he's making them fall like dominoes intentionally because his son finna come in rain for a thousand years and forever more okay, okay. okay. who else uh, who, who who else isn't uh who else been involved pope francis pope francis why is it important because one world government, one world religion. You know where they you know where they held the global summit at? You know, do you know where this global health summit was held, held at? Italy, Rome. Look, you gotta understand what is going on right now, brothers and sisters. The one world religion and the one world uh government is coming together. Okay. Okay. No, they, they, they've been reaching out. I just want to show you how the Pope is really involved in a lot of one world global, globalist affair. According to a statement from the Turkish president, our President Erdogan told Pope Francis that Palestine would continue to be subjected to the mask as long as the international community did not punish Israel, which is committing humanitarian crimes and sanctions. Okay? And I just think it's tough how the whole world been claiming for the, calling for the Palestinians, but not, not many of them been supporting Israel. Why is it important? You got to ask, why have the whole world been having protests being pro-Palestine and come against Israel? Because the Bible said the whole world is going to be against Israel. Only people that would not be against Israel is true Christians. Those that play church, they're going to believe in replacement theology. Uh, they're going to believe that the church replaced the Jewish people. They did not. If you a believer think that we replaced the Jews, come out of that prideful place. Please do. Because God will judge us severely. Paul said, don't do not be high minded. If he did not spare the natural brand, neither will he spare you. Paul was talking about though Paul was prophesying because he knew in this hour that people is going to think that God replaced the church, replaced the Jews with us. But Elijah, God told Elijah that I have a remnant, 7,000 set aside. They have not about they need to build. So what was God saying? There is specific Jewish people that he's going to that's going to bow down to him um, at, at, uh, at, at the end of this seven year period and turn to Jesus that did not about they need to build. Okay. So we got to understand what is going on. Pope Francis spoke Monday with our foreign minister and Turkey president Erdogan and, the ongoing, and amid the ongoing diplomatic effort to end violence in, in the Israeli-Gaza conflict. Pope received an Iran head diplomat since 2013 for a private audience. Okay, that's it. The Iranian government delegation also met with the Vatican Secretary of State Connor, uh, the Secretary for the Relations with States. Okay, so you see all these people meeting with the Pope. Iran meeting with the Pope. Different people, why is that important? Because whoever is the Pope at the time of the Antichrist, he's going to be over the one world government, one world religion system. With no true Christian stand on side with Iran or anybody else, or especially with the one world government. Why? Because if you are a true believer in Jesus, you will love the Jewish people. Why? Because they're going to be our brothers and sisters. The Jewish people is going to accept Jesus at the end of this seven year period. And if you got, if you rejecting the Jews in your heart, man, you can't have the love of God abiding in you if you're rejecting the Jewish people. Why? Because he loved them greatly. Why? Because Romans 1.16 said that, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. 
For it's the power of God to salvation, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. Yes, through the Jewish people, our salvation came. Jesus himself is a Jew. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand what is going on in this hour. The whole world is turning toward Israel, and only the true believers will stand with Israel in this hour. Okay? We got to understand what is going on. It's not a game. We are in the same period. I'm telling you, you finna see everything the book of Revelation said unfold. People that have been saying that, oh, they've been saying that forever, it's going to be hushed. They're going to be hushed severely in this hour. They're going to be hushed severely. Okay. 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 Biden just, um, Biden did, he, he said that Israel have a right um, to defend itself. So I get, I, I give him applause for that. But he said that, but still gave in to, to the uh, uh, to to the one world government, the radical left agenda, by telling them, to, by putting pressure on Israel to cease fire. Okay, Biden pressure. He told he called the prime minister of Israel and said, "Listen, listen, we need a de escalation by so and so date." So he said they got a right to defend themselves, but put pressure on them to to make an immediate ceasefire. Okay, gotta understand what is going on. I don't understand what is going on right now, brothers and sisters. Okay. Okay. Very serious account what is going on. A very serious account what is happening right now. Okay. So let's 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 go back. Go to some more articles. Climate change. Um, Biden, Biden reinstate Biden, Biden uh, reinstalls climate scientists Trump dumped. Why? Because the whole world is going to globalization through climate change as well. And, and, and the man that Trump fired that was climate change, Biden just reinstating. The Washington Post report climate scientist Michael Cooperberg was reinstated as executive director, director of the U.S. Global Change Research Program Monday. Cooper was removed from the role after president presidential election and reassigned to the Department of Energy. As head of the program, Cooper will oversee the production of the, the national climate assessment. So wait till the next climate uh, happen, next climate crisis when they, when they start issuing a, a global tax uh, on the world, but also it be a tax to climate change as well. Look at all these people they set in place. Would there be a remedy in America? Absolutely. He's gonna judge, God is gonna judge America severely he's going to bring the remedy out of it. That's why you got certain governors pushing back, like the governor of Texas just passed a law banning abortion up to six weeks. Perfect. Beautiful. God loves it. There's going to be certain governors and leave a push back against the role of the Antichrist. Okay? Some of them are going to hear what God is saying and repent, and they're going to push back. But you got some globalists that will be pushing the mark of the beast. That's why we got to warn people and let them know so they won't choose to take that mark. Okay, uh, ahead as a head of this program, Cooper will see over the pro, oversee the production of the National Climate Assessment. The report is considered the federal government state of the union on the climate change and is vetted through 13 federal agencies. Uh, the assessment provides information, observe changes, the current status of the climate and anticipated trends for the future. So this man will be controlled over uh, the things of climate change and research in America. Tell you, brother, sister, we, we have to understand what is going on in this hour. What else? What else is going on? Anthony Blinken, Mahmoud Abbas, to discuss peace process. The uh, the, sec, uh, the the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, because of this war, is now going to push, is now going forward to talk to Israelis and the Palestinians about a two-state solution to peace. What did the Bible tell us? The Antichrist confirmed the covenant with many. Well, we know that peace agreement was just signed. Last year, that coming in with many. And now the whole world has been to turn towards Jerusalem because of this recent thing that's happened with Israel and the Palestinians. The whole world has been beginning to focus on the Jerusalem where it's going to bring the Israeli and the Palestinian into agreement. There's already different agreement with different other Muslim countries, but now they're going to bring the Israel and the Palestinian into the Abraham Accord. Okay. And, it, and, and it's all moving forward with the rebuilding of the third temple, then resuming their daily sacrifice and all of that. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has promised Palestinian Authority, President Mahmoud Abbas, that he would discuss the peace process with him. This is a part, 
this is to be a part of the expected visit to the Middle East where he will meet with both Israeli and Palestinian diplomats. Okay, so just want to show you that, brothers and sisters. Okay. That peace train still move forward. Okay, surveillance. Amazon Ring is basically a giant civil civilian surveillance network. Okay. After partnering with almost 2,000 police departments, is this home security product a threat to democracy? Okay. The home security company ring purchased by Amazon in 2016 is now part of the largest civilian civilian um, surveillance surveillance uh, um, network the U.S. has ever seen, according to New Opinion Piece, The Guardian. Ring video doorbells, Amazon sitting home security product pose a serious threat to free and de democratic society. Okay. A PhD uh, candidate uh, of communication in Pennsylvania, not only is Ring surveillance network spread, spreading rapidly, it is extending the reach of, reach of law enforcement into private property and expanding the surveillance of everyday life. So they're talking about the Ring product in regards to surveillance. See, surveillance is coming through, it's coming down. You don't think they do all of these things out of peace and safety, but the Antichrist is going to use peace and safety to bring the world into global surveillance. Jesus. The Antichrist is going to use peace and safety to bring the world into global surveillance through transparency. So they giving out different cameras and different security products up to say that, hey, does it help you keep people from breaking through into your house? You can watch your product and write different things. But in reality, on the backside, it's bringing the world into a global surveillance. Okay, So uh, just want you to know that, brother, this is what is happening. Should we be afraid? Absolutely not. This is for us to be aware. Okay. okay, let's keep moving forward. Okay. Um, well, get into this article. Uh, is where two worlds, two worlds, wars, the jihadists and the media. Okay. We are expected to believe that Hamas, famous for hiding behind women and children, would never use an associated press building. Now, watch this now. Israel shot down a, a, a media building, a, some major news network building. Why? Because the terrorist organization had offices in a media building. You see what I'm saying? Even the media are in a cahoot with terror organization that they hide behind these people. How can you say that you've been in a media building for a long time and you never knew that Hamas was in that building? I don't believe that not one bit. We are expected to believe that Hamas famous for hiding behind women and children would never use associated press building in Gaza as cover for its terrorist organization. If that doesn't is not enough, here's another one. We are expected to believe that AP would never share office space with Hamas. They sharing out the Associated Press building that Israel took down was sharing space with Hamas. Like they're building the out of the top of the thwart Hamas from further deadly mischief. Okay. So we got to understand that not only will people in this world be against Israel, but the media itself will be operate upon the spirit of the Antichrist to be against Israel as well. Okay. The media, all of these people, the media, they're going to hate the two witnesses. They're going to be, there's going to be, the book of Revelation 11 talks about two witnesses that will come on the scene. The media is going to hate them. Why? Why? Because they're going to stand up and preach the true gospel of the end time and what the government is doing and also um, what God has to say about the Jewish people. And they're going to hate them. The media is against Israel. A lot, I'm telling you, brothers, you got to understand what is, what is going on, brothers and sisters. Okay. What is what is what is what is Biden doing now? <clears throat> Saying he's gonna go into go into uh, Gaza Strip and rebuild and rebuild Gaza Strip. What else? Uh, last time I checked, that um, there was a fifty billion fifty billion economic plan econ economic plan to turn the, the Gaza Strip into the Singapore the Middle, Middle East Singapore the Middle East. And here Biden saying that he's going to go in there and want to be in head and rebuild the Gaza Strip. What is all this going to do? Bring, what is all this leading to? They're, they're bringing Israelis and the Palestinians together, brothers and sisters. To continue to fulfill everything God said in this, uh, 
seven year in the seven year period. Multi billion plan that kind of sound like Trump peace deal that was in Trump peace deal. No matter who in office, the Abraham Accord still can go forward. Trump had an economic comment saying that he wanted to put fifty billion dollars into the Palestine and the Gaza Strip. Biden want to do a multi billion dollar plan as well. It don't matter, God. No matter who is in the office, they still gonna do what God said they're gonna do because He told us to end from the beginning. Multi billion plan reportedly to be coordinated through the UN will seek to get Hamas a lot of loose where it resumes attacks on Israel. Now, as a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas terror group took effect on Friday, the United States was planning to head a multi billion dollar international effort to assist rebuilding the Gaza Strip for eleven days, following the eleven days of fighting. The New York Times report the goal it is said is partly to bring pressure through promises of financial support on Hamas not to resume fighting. The reported aid plan likely to be coordinated through the United Nations. What is that? The one world government would depend on Hamas not resuming its rocket fire towards the Israel, the report said. The plan response is said to include billions of dollars worth of aid for health and education service and reconstruction. Okay. Okay. The administration is also considering how to foster relation and coordinating among rival Palestinian poli uh, political faction in Gaza and the West Bank outline, okay? And a deputy senior secretary to the state of Israel, Palestinian issues. So what are you saying? They're trying to use this to coordinate with a plan to deal with uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis, two-state solution to do what? Eventually fulfill Joel chapter two. You gotta understand what is going on, brothers and sisters. These things, are the everything you see happen in the news, everything you see happen in the news moving forward, it's not gonna happen by accident. It's going to unfold the book of Revelation. Everything what is happening ever since Abraham Accords was signed, everything you see happen in the news, everything else, it's not going to, it's going to, going to do nothing but fulfill the book of Revelation and, and fulfill every prophecy God said. Okay. Okay. Well, you just seen them. Uh, if you just seen them pass the hate crime, the COVID-19 hate crime act. Okay. They said that it was about the Asian community, people running in, shooting up stuff and stuff like that. You see how they use other people pain to push their agenda. They said that they care about people. Some of them might do, but not all of them. Majority of them love agendas and they just see people when they see crisis, they use crisis to push their agenda. What did the Holy Spirit tell us? That there's going to be crisis after crisis in the seven year period. And it's going to allow for them to push their agenda to, per to oppress the world during the great tribulation. Every crisis, every agenda that they've in the past, they're going to use every crisis to push a global agenda to oppress the world during the great tribulation through the dictatorship of the Antichrist. That is what is happening. Okay. 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 Unfortunately, like much of the legislation arising out of the 117 country Congress, the bill plays hot the ball and it's real person. Listen, purpose, look, sexual identitarianism. It describes the COVID-19 hate crime as a violent crime motivated by the actual or perceived race, ethnicity, the age, color, religion, and national origin, sexual orientation, gender, or gender identity or disability of any person, and actual or perceived relationship between those characteristics and the spread of COVID-19. Mm -mm -mm. This is not too far from the Equality Act as well. They want to pass the Equality Act, but COVID-19 tackle the same thing. We, th we think that hate crime, the hate crime, COVID-19 hate, hate crime that they just signed in the law was just about um, color and racial issue. That was not what it's only about. It also about hate crime against LGBT. If you say something about AG, LGBT or you do this about LGBT, that's a hate crime. And you know what else? And this hate crime act, it gives money for them to create their own unit task force. People that would be undercover, people that would, uh, units that would be in place to tackle uh, domestic terror uh, and secret agents to tackle hate crime, those that commit hates, to commit hate crimes. And what, what, what this article talks about, it's just not about hate crimes against race tissue. It's all, also against gender identity. If you, do, if you say that it's wrong uh, um, for a, a man to do, to man to be with a man, be, man if you say them, that's wrong. You can't marry a man. God said that's wrong. That's not right. Or you can't lead my ministry. You can't do that. You know what they're going to say? You're committing a hate crime against them because you said it was wrong that they like a man. You said it was wrong that they should not be able to lead the church. They said that that's a hate crime. But I wake up and many people clap that uh, clap that down. Woo! We got the COVID-19. Hey, not knowing what the old people have hidden in that bill. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's very serious account. It's very serious account. It's not a game. These people, every, I'm telling you, 
every bill that these globalists pass, they hiding things of deception in it to persecute the people who won't follow their new world order. Right? Very serious account. But you'll see as time go forward, people right now sleep, but watch as time go forward when they started enforcing things on different people. And, and, and people be like, how can they do that to people? Well, they're going to say, look, according to resolution, so-and-so, according to uh, uh, Bill 927, or according to this bill, we have the right to do that. But I thought it was about this. Oh, no. Read in the bill. I'm telling you. It's, it's very serious. Okay. Senate Bill 937. That's the text. I just got the text right here. Maybe I can send that bill to people. E email that bill, but it's just the bill of everything that was in that, uh, that Congress bill of COVID-19 that they passed. Okay. Okay. Uh, I might not be able to, might not come up. If it don't, I'm just going to delete it. Okay. All of humanity should be united against Israel. Okay. Now, this again, just confirming. And a statement that set off prophetic alarm bells for many Christian and Jews, Turkish President Erdogan urged Pope Francis to join him coming against Israel. Wow. Erdogan, Erdogan, so this is what Turkey said to the Pope. Now, the Pope to respond, so I don't know how he, what happened, but he reaching out to the Pope. Erdogan uh, fancies himself the leader of the Sunni world and sees the Pope as the primary head of Christianity. Look at it now. Why? Because the book of Revelation 13 said it's going to be a, it's going to, he said another beast came out of the sea. Um, he spoke like, he he looked like a lamb, but he sounded like a dragon. And you see that this world ruled the Pope as the head of Christianity. He looked like a lamb, but when you listen to his doctrine, he sounded like the devil. And whoever is the Pope at the time of the Antichrist, he's going to claim to be a lamb, but he's going to sound like the devil. Okay? In his eye, they must come together to lead the rest of the world and confront the Jewish menace. You get it now? I'm telling you. Better watch out what's going on. Okay. Uh, Pope Francis call. Okay, well, we talked about that. We talked about that. Um, Israel now, oh, Israel now can trade with the goal is changing and you, because of Abraham Accord, they can now, they can now trade with UAE and Dubai. Why that's important? Because I ran Russia and Turkey at the battle of Armageddon, they're gonna come against Israel to say that we need to take money from Israel. So what did that mean? They said they're gonna to try to plunder Israel. Now the United Nations is just gonna be trying to take Jerusalem, but other people is gonna is one gonna is one to take the wealth. They're gonna to want to have a stake in the wealth of Jerusalem, take wealth from Jerusalem. Okay. So why is Israel getting so much money and sign all the agreements? Because the book of Ezekiel 30 said Iran, Russia, and Turkey is gonna to come to try to plunder Israel, take their money. So that means in order for the battle of Armageddon to even fulfill the battle of Armageddon, that means Iran, Russia, and Turkey got to be north of Israel, which they are in Syria. But it also means that Israel got to be prosperous and have a booming economy. Well, Israel has signed a minute deal. Now they can exchange. Israel can trade on a Dubai on a Muslim gold, uh, gold exchange now. Israel can trade. That's tough, man. And at first, they can change on a Muslim gold exchange. Very serious account. Okay. Okay. Even George Bush spoke up recently about the war with Israel. He said that, and his family believed in globalism, but he just said that you can see Iran, uh, you can see Iran uh, hand in Hamas. You see Iran hand in Hamas. So, you know, this man, a globalist, even came out of his own mouth. See, God sometimes will use. He can use people that even believe in their agenda to speak that Iran is behind what happened with Hamas. Okay. So you gotta understand what is going on right now, brother and sister. Okay. House of Pool Capital Riot Pro Mini Republic but leadership. So right now, the House of Pools a a a a probe into what happened on the Capitol Riot. But this all leading to a place of domestic terror. Now, they haven't passed the Senate, but they have passed this bill. Uh, uh, to probe to what happened in the Capitol, but all this really is going to lead to 
uh, the bill established an independent commission to probe Jen. So to establish an independent investigation, the U.S. House, the US House of Representatives on Wednesday voted to create an independent commission to probe January 6th attack on the Capitol by former de, de, pro, former President Donald Trump supporters. So they create an independent co a commission to probe people to probe Trump supporters. Is it about Trump? Absolutely not. But what it's about. They want to purge conservative, but it's not conservative. Eventually, this is going this is going to be the heart of the whole one world government to purge Christians who don't want to follow their agenda, and they will create different things so the world can turn turn against them. Okay, this is what this is about, brothers. It's very serious account. Okay, okay. Uh, Biden uh, Biden is the first president to omit God from prayer. Okay. Said that they believe in God, but in the National Day of Prison, the first president that omit God, uh, to, that omit God from National Day of Prayer. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Remember the whole world going into a global healthcare system. Global healthcare system. That is what these globals are trying to implement in America. Monthly child tax credit. That's why I said, brother and sister, though they would give some of these things to us, let, don't let your heart get attached to it. When it's time to drop these things, do not take the mark of the beef for this stuff. They're bringing the whole world into this. Especially next crisis, they're gonna really put push out different benefits to try to say that they help people, but it's really it's to get your heart attached to it. So you have to take the mark of the beast to keep it. So I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when they give all of these benefits, this, this we're going to a universal economy, universal health care. Do not let your uh, heart get attached to it. Do not let your heart get attached to it. When it's when they say, hey, you got to take the mark to keep it. You better turn it down. You better you better walk away from it because that's what it's leading to. Monthly child tax credit pay to begin. Okay, some 39 million U.S. families with, with children are set to begin receiving monthly payments in July as part of the expanded child tax credit in Treasury Department out on Monday. Okay, so what am I saying, brothers and sisters? They've sent these things out to many people, even to me and my family. But you know what I'm telling my family every day? Do not let your heart get attached to it because all of it is desensitizing man's heart to take the mark of the beast. Use it, but not do, do not let your heart be attached to it. Do not let your heart be attached to it because the mark of the beast coming behind. You, okay? Starting on July 15, quality families will receive a payment of $300 per month for each child under six and up to $250 per month for a general between ages six and 17. Why is it important? Because the whole world is going into a universal health care and universal benefit system. And that's what the global health, global health summit was about. Globalizing the benefits of this world. That entails economy, money, and also health care. And that is what these globals are trying to do in America. Okay. Uh, we got uh, we got Macron's extended support for Israel to return to peace. Uh, the leader of France, the leader of France was the uh, the leader of France was the main ruler. Um, the 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 leader of France uh, was talking in regards to Egypt with the ceasefire as well. Um, I forgot to send an email to myself, but I got a picture that God showed me in a vision in January 2020. He showed me the tanks of Israel moving. He showed me France would be in awe, be, in, uh, be involved. Don't you know Israel, tank, uh, Israel tanks was uh, uh, by the Gaza Strip and France was also involved in regards to the ceasefire? But it's more to that vision that God showed me. But God was just showing me. He showed me that these things would happen before they happen. He showed me what happened January of 2020. I wish I could. I sh uh, next time I'll show y'all, I pray that I remember, I'm going to show y'all the vision of January of January 2020. God showed me that these type of things would happen and France would be involved. And the, Emmanuel Macron is the president of France. And he spoke in regards to the ceasefire as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, across Europe, mass protests occur against Israel. Why is that far fetched? Why is it not far fetched? Because Europe will be the power base of the Antichrist. And it's not far fetched that it will be protests against Israel, against Israel for the Palestinians. Okay. Okay. No, watch this. See, see right here? Just to show you what, uh, just to show you right here how France was involved. France was also involved with drafting a resolution at the United Nations. And God showed me in this vision that these type of things would happen. But France is gonna be even more involved with, with the peace agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians moving forward. Watch it, watch it. France circulate draft, draft, draft 
France circulates draft UN resolution council, uh, draft UN security council resolution urging Gaza ceasefire. Okay. The French mission to the United Nations circulate a draft resolution to members of the security council on Tuesday that calls for a ceasefire between Israel and the Gaza group as countries on the top UN body continue their efforts of weighing in on the on, 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 in on the ongoing violence despite U.S. objection. French President Emmanuel Macron often publicly announced the following matter of a trial or meeting with Egyptian. Why is that important? Because Europe will be uh, 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 Europe will be um, the Antichrist will be over the wealth of Europe. So it's not by accident that people from the Holy Roman Empire is con is in contact with the President of Egypt in revol in regards to the ceasefire with the Palestinian Israeli. Why? Because the Antichrist is going to be behind the scenes when all of this takes place. Okay. The Antichrist was behind the scene of the ceasefire. Listen to me, brother. So the Antichrist is already a politician. He's not waiting to get in power. He's already a politician. The power he's going to walk into is just to govern the whole one world government. The, the, the Antichrist is already a major. He's already a major politician. OK, the next step the Antichrist is going to take is just when he the next step he's going to take is when the whole United Nations said that we need to follow the, the world need to follow him. And they're going to give him the authority over the United Nations. That's the next step he's going to take. That is the only that is the only step the Antichrist is waiting to take. He already a politician. The next step he's going to take is to take over the United Nations. That's what they're setting the stage for. It's for him again to take taking. OK. OK. Uh, Fred Medicine. President Emmanuel Macron office publicly announced the matter of following trial of the meeting. A general counterpart, out of out of Fasisi, who is currently visiting Paris, joined the King of Nula, who joined the video conference. Okay, uh, the shooting must stop. The time has come for a ceasefire, um, and the UN Security Council must take up the issue. Okay, so brother and sister, the Lord showed me that France would be involved. He showed me Israeli tank. He showed me France would be involved, and I'm gonna show it to y'all next week. I wish I really had emailed the image, um, so I can just show it to you. Um, from my phone okay now even in my state i'm just showing you how these digital things are happening even in my state even in my state right now uh even in my state right now colorado city to accept digital id during traffic stop okay in my state they're starting to set digital identity but all this all these things are leading to the market of breeze it's not the technology itself is evil it just is setting up the b system so when the market's issued uh when the market's issued um, you have to take it because everything is going to be in a system. Uh, Governor Gerald Pollitt announced that some cities in the state will begin to accept state issued digital identification. A major goal of digital ID, I just don't want to pop up when I'm reading. Okay. A major goal of digital ID program is to reduce how much officers spend time on road during traffic stop. The Colorado public reported to limit chance that they are hit by passing car. What is this? Out of peace and safety. Okay. See, it looked good on the surface that you know the office can be more safe to see the bible tell us first that's only it's out of peace and safety sudden destruction so they're gonna do all create all of these system and all of these different deception through the ufo talking about aliens and different other things all of us token of peace and safety and you know what us that hope in this world and hope in government we're gonna like, yes we need to do it for us to be safe but if we trust in jesus we know our safety is in him and our and our safety come by our salvation and not by the physical things of this life okay True statement, brothers. This is a real serious account. What is happening right now? Okay. Mm. Uh, one university. Uh, let me see. A politician banned from. Let me just show you something. What is going on? Okay. Uh, let me see. That praises. Okay, no. Okay. Muslim Brotherhood praises Democrat for. Praises Democrat for abandoning Israel. Okay. Muslim Brotherhood praises Democrat for abandoning Israel. Okay. The Muslim Brotherhood is praising Democrats such as Representative Rashid Tlaib and uh, Omar, who are criticizing Israel for de defending itself against the ongoing rocket attacks of civilian by terrorist groups in Hamas. So you got Muslim praising these Democrats right here, these two, de these Democrats for turning against Israel. So we have to understand what is going on. In America, there's going to be a fight between globalists. And though in the remnant that that is not, but that's going to push back in the spirit of the Antichrist. That's going to push back uh, and and warn people not to take the mark of the beast. It's going to be a fight, okay? Uh, but God is going to judge America severely, so the remnant can rise up to have strength to push back. Okay, the the judgment on America is going to humble America. The remnant is going to rise up. It's going to give us strength and a wonder to push back 
and we must warn people not to take the mark and we're going to have a revival okay uh now watch this now this this just recently happened major church looks to kill saying husband and wife at wedding that is crazy my heart was broken you see how now we haven't even hit the great tribulation but because a lot of laws and regulations being passed some leaders are walking in fear uh, uh walking in fear and um uh, and i just want to encourage you uh because i'm not a pastor uh, i'm an evangelist but i want to encourage you brother ac to continue to stand firm bro because i know it's a lot around on your shoulder as a leader to be able to stand up against these type of things that's going to be passed and um, even myself being out here, the stuff I'm going to face and suffer, but I pray for encouragement for you as well, because some leaders not going to stand firm. Some will cave in. OK, and it's crazy, man. Major church looks to kill, say a husband and wife. How can us preach the Bible, say that we can't man? It, but but ain't that fulfilling, Timothy? They just said it's going to say in the last day, going to tell people uh, forbidden to marry and the different types of stuff that is going to be going on. Major church looks to kill, say a husband and wife at wedding. The general assembly of the Church of Scotland soon will be reviewing a plan to drop the term husband and wife from marriage ceremony. Oh, my heart breaks. Why my heart breaks? How can you say you preach the Bible? Man, that's crazy. It's that, it's that, uh, it's that, it, it's that sometimes, well, these days there is no husband or wife because the church is planning to dive headlong to affirm the same sex duos. That's crazy. The Christian Institute described the plans as radical and know that later this month, the leaders of the religious organization will consider a specific plan to cure references, husband and wife. That's crazy. A church now, they said they believe in the Bible, planning uh, to kill uh, three, uh, um, the term husband and wife. Three years ago, the church leaders approved a plan 30, 345 to 17 to have the legal question committee suggest a new language. That's crazy. Currently, the church marriage ceremony explained the parties covenant together to take each other as husband and wife as long as they both shall live. And the minister declares the parties to be as husband and wife. Oh, this breaking my heart, man. The proposal would make, the proposal would make it. Oh, man, my heart crying. Holy Spirit, help me finish it. The proposal would make it, uh, would make it. The parties covenant together to take each other in a marriage as long as they both shall live. The minister and deacon declares part of the marriage. There has been concern among the those in the church who still define marriage using biblical standards that they would be punished if they refuse to promote same sex. That's crazy, man. People inside of the church want to persecute people who want to stand up. See, the true, the 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 false church is going to persecute the true church for standing up for what the Bible says in this hour. But those push proposed a claim no one who does not wish to involve in the ceremony saying says marriage shall uh marriage shall be required to do so. However, a legal opinion that comes with the amendment warns that at some point there's an unavoidable and an unavoidable conflict between conscious based on objection and the rights of those who wish to marry. It's crazy, man. See, false leaders will cave in to the one world government. Those that love money, even some of these false leaders in America, they're gonna conform just like that. But there will be a obedient church remedy in America that's going to speak boldly against it and already at work. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is, all I, um, this is all I have for you today. Um, uh, this is all I have for you today. And I pray that this, I pray that it was a blessing to you. I had to get this word out. Uh, I know it was a full plate, a full meal. We've been over a little long, but um, I had to bait the will of the Lord, brothers and sisters, and show you these, uh, show you, uh, and show you what is going on. Um, but um, it's some people trying to um, start a uh, uh, Columbia University, Columbia University students start a communist club. So communism is invading universities, invading uh, schools. Uh, why? Because the whole world is going into the communism through the spirit of the Antichrist. Okay. Um, so brothers, this is all I have for you today. I pray indeed that the word is blessed to you. And I pray that it really... Um, lead you into everlasting life brothers and sisters and um really keep you away from the deception of what's going to happen in this hour okay and i'm gonna stop my screen and stop share uh uh is there any in, is there any comments brothers is there any comment brothers and sisters? is there any testimony is there any question okay uh, Brother AC, do you have anything you want to say? 
Good evening. God bless you, man. Oh, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm glad to see you doing better. Uh, appreciate you, man. As well. But uh, definitely uh, where we are and what's happening right now, man, I had an opportunity today and I was in, in my business establishment and I was able to turn on a, a video from Ronald President Ronald Reagan from like, like <laughs> 1964. Mm. And uh, people was like, what? This man, this Ronald Reagan, he wasn't even the president then. I'm like, no, he wasn't, but y'all should hear this speech. You know what's going on. And I said, um, uh, cause they was in there talking about racism and how the white man still trying to keep the black man down and all this. And they tired of seeing the white man do this and the white man do that. And I'm like, well, I listen to the listen to these words this man is saying. And I said, if you if you kind of hear the divide, it's not necessarily be, between uh, black and white, but you see, but what you see the divide is for the free versus the ones who want to enslave or have people that are controlled by them. And you think about America, America thinks that America being great was the mindset of America to come and build and come to be free, to worship freely, to, to own your business and mm -hmm. do these different type things. But in, excuse me, in this speech, uh, one of the, the illustrations that was given was that if America loses its freedom, all hope is lost because there's no freedom. There's no freedom anywhere else. Oh wow! Like the last, like the last standing ground for what freedom actually is supposed to stand for mm. and actually be, and so every every president literally who's 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 been as I was just beginning to just open that up, talking about presidents who actually stood for setting the oppressed free and and letting people uh, uh, take a part of those type of liberties. Uh, there was an attempt or uh, assassination that was actually uh, intended for those persons um, as well. So just just to highlight and just kind of bring that out a little bit to kind of have us uh, stop talking about racism so much. And also just another illustration about how the word goes um, that when you think about the truth, we can't be so one sided and so single-minded that we only view things from one view and that's why I, I was actually showing I said that's why the Bible has to be so solid and so 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 firm as far as being infallible and, and how we can stand on it to be true because in the gospel you have all of those uh, authors that have a, a the a different viewpoint but they're all saying the same exact thing I said that if you look at the media where we get our news from, where we get our truth from, if you look at one particular station and you're not looking at anything else, if you're not looking at anything else, thank you, man. if you're not looking at anything else, you actually see that there is a different story being told on each, on each channel. So how can we call any of that truth? So um, that, those are just illustrations of things that I was able to share with some people just to kind of highlight some things and, and enlighten people to a, to a degree. Cause I had a little young man that just graduated from college and he came and was saying, oh, I can't believe you watching this devil on the news. Uh, this is the worst news channel ever. This, you need to be watching CNN news. And I said, I watch CNN, but I watch this too. And he said, well, I would never watch this. They, 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 they have so much propaganda on this news station. You should never watch this as a black man. And uh -huh. I said, okay, I got you. I said, so you sound like you're a Black Lives Matter person. And he's like, oh yeah, that's like the best movement ever. Right uh -huh. now, I said, okay, I, I got you. I see where you at. And I, you just graduated college? I said, okay, you need to come sit in the barbershop a little more, man. You're gonna learn some stuff. You <laughs> 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 gotta kind of have some conversation and dialogue. <laughs> To kind of even see how the world prepares our young people to go out and um and 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 be in the workforce or be um so-called equipped to go out and be 
uh, persons to be to be our next politicians, to be our next leaders in, in, in government even, and how the world prepared them for that type of stuff. So it was just, it was eye-opening, man. Uh, and just an eye-opening opportunity to sow into the lives of others as well. So um, it's, it's happening and we just find ourselves in the right place. God always, always uh, make room for us to be able to share and pour into someone. So I just wanted to throw that out there tonight. All right, God bless you. Amen, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you. Uh, Ed O'Brien, brother, can you pray us out, my brother? Uh, I don't know if he's still, he's still in the building. Uh, if not, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I can hear you, brother. Okay. All right. Then. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for what you're doing. And what you have done, we thank you, God, first of all, that our brother is feeling so much better. God, we thank you for the healing power, oh God, yes, that has rest upon his body. Yes, and God, we ask you to continue to strengthen all of us in our spirit, man, oh God, that we will hear uh, the words of truth, oh God, and that we will be vigilant to perform your will. Yes, God, I thank you, God, for those that have had ears to hear what the spirit is saying to the church. I thank you for all that you are doing and all that you have done. God, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you keep our eyes open and our ears attentive. Continue to keep us as watchmen on the wall, oh God, oh, that we may yes, discern the times and the seasons by which we are in, oh God. Father, you equipped us for the time as this, and God allow us to be astute so that we may warn others. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this capacity, and we thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Cover our families, God, and Father, allow us to preach the good news of the gospel, the fullness of and the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Love y'all, brothers and sisters. Love you too.